Greetings everybody and welcome to my 7 days to die XML modding tutorial series. This is a quick follow up to the very first episode that I have done for the XML modding for beginners series because you guys let me know in the comments that there is actually a new mods install location. Now for everyone who's playing Alpha 21 currently, uh, in the current version the mods folder can be placed directly in the 7 days to die folder like we showed in the first episode. However, I'm going to show you the new location for it just in case you guys need to port it over to make it compatible with future versions of 7 Days to Die. I believe they're making this change because after the move to console, they don't want any alterations being made into the main 7 Days to Die folder, so they decided to move the mod location. So without any further ado, let's get started! <laughs> The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is open a new file explorer window. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to open it on my desktop here. Now what you want to do is in the file explorer window, I'm going to expand this fully, you want to make sure that you have hidden files enabled. So we're going to go into view and then over on the right hand side here you should see a tick box that says hidden items. If this isn't enabled you need to make sure this one is enabled because this is where we need to go ahead and move our mods folder to. Now what we're going to do is you can see that I've set up a shortcut from episode 1 into my main 7 days to die folder. If you haven't done this you can actually go into Steam and then you need to go right click on your 7 days, go into properties and then go into install files and then you can go ahead and browse. This will open up a window into your 7 days to die directory where you can find everything that you need. This is where we set up our mods folder in episode 1. However, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and right click on this and we're going to go ahead and cut this from this area. So the mods folder, we just want to right click on it and then the option to cut should appear just down here. So we're going to go ahead and cut it from here. And then we need to find the new location where we want to put our mods folder. The game should still load this correctly if we do this correctly. So I'm going to go back into my desktop one that I've opened here. And then you want to go and navigate to your C drive. So you can get on that and go to this PC. And then we're going to go into main drive C. Now what you want to do is you want to look for your user folder. So you're going to go under users and then you're going to click on your username. Mine is metal, so I'm going to click on this one. But yours, of course, will be different than that. Next, what you want to do is find the hidden folder called app data. You'll know if it's the right one because the folder icon should be slightly ghosted out a little bit. So you can see these ones are kind of appearing in a yellow color. This one looks a little bit, a little bit more see through. And that's how you can tell that it's a hidden folder. So remember, if you can't see this, make sure you go into view at the top and make sure that hidden items is enabled up the top here. We're going to go into this folder and then we're going to go into the roaming folder right here. As soon as you come into this folder, you should see a couple of things. And one of them here is seven days to die. We're going to click right into that one. And then this is where your game saves are stored. But what you want to do is paste your mods folder directly into here. So we're going to right click and I'm going to go, go in and paste it right here. And now all your mods should be now moved over into this area. This is the new location by default that seven days will use from alpha 21 and onwards to load your mods. Now, as I said, the mods folder in your main game directory will still work. However, to make sure that your mods are future proofed, it's best to move it into here for all modding episodes going forward and from episode four of this series I will have moved this over here so if you guys are coming from episode four and I pointed you back to this one then you'll know where we're at from there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check that our mods have ran and they're working so we're going to go back into Steam and we're going to go back to seven days here and we're going to go ahead and click on play. So we're going to let the game load up and then we're going to do as you guys know the F1 test so we're going to go ahead and hit, hit F1 when we get into the title screen and what we should see is the console come up and as you can see you can see that the mods menu has come up here and you can see that it's trying to load from the folder my first modlet and you can see that even though our modlet has now moved to the app data folder it loads just fine so all the changes that we've done up to this point should have registered so we're going to go back into our world over here and then we're going to go ahead and start up here. And when the game loads, we should see that everything is being passed as normal. Remember, keep an eye out for yellow text just in case you've got any XPath errors. And, you know, the dreaded red text as well. You don't want to see that. We'll keep an eye on the console, make sure everything is working. But what we should find is when the world goes ahead and loads up fully, we'll be able to go ahead and check that our changes have still applied. Now, if anyone's coming directly from episode one, all we've done essentially is added a few recipes, which we will cover in episodes two and three. So definitely make sure to keep an eye on that. But if you're coming from episode four, then of course you'll be aware of some of these changes that we've already made. 
Now that we've loaded into our world and made sure that everything is loaded correctly with no yellow text, I'm going to go ahead and show you that the mod is still working by showing you that we've actually got the recipes that we added before. So the first recipe we added from episode two was actually a bottle of acid recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And as you can see, we added it and we put it onto the chemistry station and it shows up right here. So there is another way we can verify that everything has worked a OK. So honestly, that's all we're going to cover in this episode. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was caught up just in case in the future you guys are like, oh, I've put my mods in the mods folder and things aren't working as they should be. So I wanted to make sure that all of you guys have access to the new mod folder location. And I hope this has helped you diagnose any errors and stuff as well that may come up in the future. But guys, that's going to be all for this little episode here. Just a little follow up one. So thank you everyone so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, bye.